Could the Federal Reserve be onto something? Is there a reason Jerome Powell is refusing to even suggest that rate hikes are possible, despite potentially core inflation trending up at the beginning of this year? And is there a reason maybe Jerome Powell is going dovish in the face of, well, frankly, hopes that inflation will fall in the second half of this year? He suggests it's because there's a better balance between labor and inflation. But is there potentially a part of the labor market that's showing more stress than maybe they're comfortable with? And those sort of leading indicators may be starting to lead the Fed to say, well, that's how a recession starts. Let's analyze it by going into this piece from Zero Hedge. Now, this piece right here talks about white collar job hiring stalling. And they use this AI image right here. But they specifically talk about the difference of various sectors of employment. Take a look at this right here. They refer to Indeed job postings for the United States and show that banking and finance, media and communications, and software development are all well below levels that we saw below the baseline pre-COVID. Everything begins right here, right about where COVID begins. Obviously, you see the plummet and you see the come up. This black line right here represents the baseline, and all of those I just mentioned are below the baseline, the exception, of course, of project management, which is slightly above that. And this weakness over here in white collar is being talked about anecdotally as well. Take, for example, this. Even though the labor market looks strong, there's a lack of job security, especially in tech, which I find that really interesting because it's for a while, it seemed like, certainly in 2022 and 2023, it's been difficult to find tech workers, uh, though now it seems like it's almost a daily occurrence, especially when I'm in person at events where people say, hey, need a programmer, need a software engineer, need, are you hiring? It's really interesting. Obviously, we run a uh, white collar business, even though I'm not wearing a white collar right now. But take a look at this. Jack Benedict, 25, learned that he and 42 other YouTube music employees had been laid off in February. All these massive companies are trying to downsize or replace people with artificial intelligence, he continued, adding that he worries college degrees are not enough when companies are asking for 10 years of experience. This is making, frankly, certain segments of the market a little bit nervous, especially since 120,000 corporate positions have vanished from San Francisco, LA, and Chicago over the last year per Bloomberg. And we've seen basically declines in Phoenix and Seattle, as well as flatlining in even Miami and Austin, which are deemed to be boom towns. So is it possible that the Federal Reserve isn't so worried about trying to fight runaway wage gains because maybe people are finally making enough money to pay for the highly inflated prices that things now cost? Housing, I think, will continue to be unaffordable. I, I, I don't know, short of this, some form of massive correction, which doesn't seem impending. It doesn't seem like prices are really going to level down anytime soon. So the Federal Reserve has walked away from the idea of fighting a wage price spiral. Instead, it seems like they're most concerned about leading indicators that maybe the level of job openings we have right now with jolts coming in softer back to pre-pandemic, close to pre-pandemic levels, and job opening surveys suggesting that hirings may be going pre-pandemic or lower, maybe the Fed is secretly nervous that the jobs market is about to flip. Now, it's certainly not going to be the consumer. Apple had been buying the dip on this one at 169 or exposing, getting a lot more exposure around 169 pretty regularly here. Apple now up 4% in after hours. Why? Because at least in the United States, you finally had a beat on Q2 revenue at Apple, which included a beat on iPhone revenue, $110 billion of share buybacks, boosted quarterly dividends, Mac revenue that beats, wearables and iPad revenues missed, but those almost always miss. And of course, China missed. But when we focus on, oh, I'm sorry, China shrunk 8.1%, but is actually expected to shrink more. So this is actually even better news from China. The point is, the consumer right now is really holding up, especially in America. Look at Expedia, for example. They just reported a beat on Q1 revenue. Their adjusted EBITDA beat. Look at the trading revenues at Coinbase. And keep in mind, not all of these that beat 
are having their stock go up. I mean, Expedia and Coinbase are seeing their stock go down. But Coinbase had this huge beat. Q1 revenue, 1.64 billion versus 132. Transactions coming in at 1.08 billion versus 775. EPS at 440 versus a dollar seven they were expecting. The numbers are actually extremely good. And their subscription and service revenue, that second phase of revenue beyond transactions, they think will come in somewhere around $560 million in the second quarter. These are actually really phenomenal numbers, and it's showing that transition that way back when Coinbase IPO'd, we talked about, that the biggest risk to Coinbase is transaction revenues go down while they go in sort of a V-shaped recovery, where transaction revenues potentially go down, and then that service side grows. Well, now that service side is starting to grow. Finally, at Coinbase, obviously, you've had a nice surge in transactions as well, but that was always a risk since IPO. And obviously, when we had the correction in 2022, that risk became magnified as transactions completely collapsed. But the point of this is the consumer seems to overall still be holding up. So it doesn't appear that it's the consumer that's really concerning the Fed, especially since leading GDP data suggests we're running at 3.1 to 3.7% GDP, depending on how you measure GDP, especially when you remove exports and inventory buildup as companies, since you don't really have to build up inventory with strong supply chains. The consumer is okay as long as they have jobs, but the Fed seems eerily focused on making sure the jobs market doesn't roll over in the face of, frankly, the jobs market potentially starting to so, show real signs of weakness. Now, we've got some data coming up that'll give us some more insights, but today, I mean, yesterday we got the ADP report. Today, obviously, we got uh, the uh, continuing claims. Both of those were decent. ADP beat slightly and continuing claims came in at expectations. We're not really expecting to see a sudden flip here in jobs data, but tomorrow we are seeing a jobs data release. By the way, mentioning this towards the end of the video, just for those loyal folks, we are doing a very brief extension of that code through the end of the day tomorrow for the courses on building your wealth, solely because there have been way too many emails and we just finished traveling at like midnight yesterday for our house hack roadshow. That's finally done and over now. Uh, and so we can really focus on getting back to people emailing us for bundles at staff at meetkevin.com. Uh, and so we're going to wrap that up quietly here by a Friday evening, and then we can finally raise prices uh, as we uh, as we move on and work on providing more value for those courses on building your wealth. So check those out down below. But understand that tomorrow we're going to be getting some important jobs data. This data, the change in non-farm payrolls, is expected to show a decline of jobs from 303 to 240. And we're looking for the unemployment rate to stay stable at 38 as well as average hourly earnings coming in at 0.3, same as the prior, and year over year coming at 4.0. Is it possible, oh, we'll also get some ISM prices paid numbers, which will be good, uh, especially since the last ones were coming a little hot, so we'll watch for those. But is it possible that the data we get tomorrow starts start like showing an increase in unemployment and cracks in the labor market? Yes. Is it likely? Probably not. It's probably not very likely that we're going to see cracks uh, in the unemployment uh, or the employment market just yet. But I think the Fed is starting to see those leading indicators. And I think they're trying to stave off stress in the Treasuries market as well, which is why they're tapering way less than they had been tapering leading up to, well, yesterday. Now they've announced a uh, reduction in Treasuries tapering down to just $25 billion a month market expectations where they'd go to 30, which again implies even more dovishness. Why? Well, it's probably because the Fed is starting to see some of the early warning signs that maybe they've gone far enough. And the last thing the Fed wants to do is overcorrect. That is the biggest fear that folks have from the Fed, that the Fed won't respond quickly enough and that they're going to overcorrect and drive us into a deep, dark recession. Treasury yields are starting to come down. The 10-year is sitting at 4.58. And let's take a look at the 210 here as inflation expectations are falling as well, which is great. We really want those inflation expectations to come down and stabilize. But the 210s curve still showing 30 basis points inverted, still suggesting a recession is potentially around the corner. Fortunately, though, that break-even inflation yield coming down to 2.37 after Jerome Powell's meeting 
So overall, the bottom line of all of this is the consumer's holding up, but the Fed is clearly looking at the leading data suggesting, okay, we got to be careful here. We got to make sure we don't go too far because we could maybe overdo it. And I want to hear from you. Is the Fed going to overdo it? Or are they going to pull this off and stick a soft landing, so to speak? I'll be covering the jobs report tomorrow morning. I'm still more cash than I was at the beginning of the year, but I'm looking for dips. And I'm especially interested in stocks outside of the AI chip sector, since I really think we've hit a bubble over there. And I'm looking for some stocks that have really gotten beaten up or stocks that I think can grow either as a benefit from AI or without AI. Like one of my faves recently, Amazon. Amazon and Apple, both of those really. But Amazon, they're profitable on their junk selling business. I mean, Amazon.com business. I use them all the time. <laughs> and so I'm really proud of them. That was always a great anchor for the company. Now they're profitable. Now, of course, I'm a little concerned about the accounting shenanigans over at a company like Carvana, given that they recognized an over $70 million uh, benefit in the value of their investment in an insurance company to offset and cover up the fact, I mean, it's in their financials, so it's not really a cover up, but you know, publicly, they make it seem like they've got positive earnings per share and that they're growing. They're covering up their loss with, a, with realizing a gain on their stock investment in some insurance company. Seems a little sus. They did though have more revenue, but it's still a money losing business. So I'm staying far away from that one. And personally, I would love to short it. But there's too much momentum in that one for me. Too hot to touch, at least for now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What is J-Pal C? Are you gonna come be with me at 5.30 in the morning, California time, 8.30 a.m. East Coast time to watch the jobs report? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.